So hello everybody, I'm Bradley McGuinness. I'm a co-founder at a startup called Tarpico. And at Tarpico, we, we're very much in the open finance space sort of already, I would say. And we do that in two ways, essentially taking uh, the open banking APIs into a single aggregated API. Not that different to many other people I know, but what we're doing is bringing that into the advisory and wealth space and we do a couple of value adds on top of that to make it more appropriate for that use case. And the second point is we help advisory and wealth systems, these platforms and applications, get their data out. So getting it out into, uh, at the moment, what is sort of selected third-party applications. So that is the, the realm that um, Tapico operates in. So if you go back to really the core use case for open finance, and that's really creating an aggregated view. So obviously we can do that with open banking to a certain degree. You can bring together your payment accounts, but as has been mentioned by um, other, other guests on the panel, that a person's financial life is made up with much more, many more products, many more assets uh, on the asset side and also on the liability side. So that aggregated view should sit somewhere some sort of platform is going to offer that view to the end user there's potential that it's personal finance management app uh, your bank may do that but really it does make sense for that view to sit underneath uh, an advisor so an end user can go here's what i've got here's my financial life and present that to an advisor and get essentially advice on it and if that advisor can see everything they'll be able to give you a better quality of advice. In terms of the consent mechanisms, it, again, from a consumer point of view, you really can't have them differentiate between open banking and open finance because for a end user, they may not be aware that, you know, for example, if you bank with Barclays, you bank with Barclays, you also invest in Barclays Smart Investor, two different systems, but as far as they're concerned, that's one. Uh, you know, provider. They don't want to have to have two different methods for logging on. So it is an important thing. And perhaps uh, a bank ID uh, has a place to play, but um, I think there's a lot of issues around that. It's almost like a separate, separate topic, you know, in terms of would such an ID go as far as uh, KYC and liability issues around that, that, that sort of stuff, which is bigger, bigger topic. 